All right, welcome back. So we are going to, as I said, take a look at a quick analysis about how pop music has changed in the last three years. So we start off with asking, what kind of data would we need to answer this question? Okay, well, let's concentrate not on the musical part of this question, but on the lyrical part because, hey, we're doing text analysis. So um, let's grab the 200 most popular songs, right? We're going to get our song data, you know, how popular are they um, from Spotify, and we're going to get our lyrics from Genius.com. So trying to grab the 200 most popular and only grabbing those songs that actually exist in the lyrics sheets in Genius, we don't get everything we go for. We only get somewhere between 127 and 152 songs, depending upon the year. All right. So we can check a couple of different months. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, not just in the year, but we're going to try, you know, kind of February versus November kinds of questions. Okay. So we're going to ask a bunch of different things of this. Let's start off with how do the number of words change, just like our uh, hip hop analysis, and does uniqueness or diversity change? So let's take a look at 2017, 18, and 19. Now, the number of words we saw in the hip hop analysis seemed, the number of unique words seemed to be declining over time, right? So do we see something similar in the pop data? And I will tell you that indeed we do. This peak here in November 2019 is quite a lot higher and it's a little bit to the left of this one over here where things were more spread out. And if you look at say something like the number of songs that had over a thousand unique words in them, that's, you know, a maybe in, not, not a thousand, that's, that's the wrong one to pick, but let's say like something like 750. If you pick how many are over here, it's probably something like 60 or so or 50. Now, maybe more like 30 or so, right? Over here, it's like oh, 15 in November 2019. It's like, yeah, probably 15 over here as well. So, you know, it seems by eye that maybe the histogram is shifting a little bit to the left with time. Um, what about diversity and density? What, what is diversity and density anyway with a lexicon? Well, the diversity is just the flat out number of unique stems left in the song lyric. Okay, after we remove all the does and ofs and other stop words. Okay, so uh, your average song, your median song, has much less than a hundred words in it in terms of unique words, unique stems, right? Like that playing and played are both the same stem, so they'll only count once. So yeah, it's kind of surprising how few words there are in a song, huh? So the density is another measure that is very related. Essentially, it is just the proportion of those unique words to the non-unique ones, to the total words. So less than half of words. So not only are there only 100 unique words, less than half of them are completely unique, right? So 100 unique stems. And of those, all the words, whether they're stemmed or not, what proportion of them are unique? And so like they're saying is that there's a lot of function words like the and a and that kind of thing. And also things like pronouns like he, okay? And you can see here the representation of different densities that he loves going to the cinema has only got half of the words being unique and John Smith intensely loves going to the huge cinema every day, sounds much more, um, I mean, you can see like the sound of, of a highly dense 
uh, lexicon is very different than everyday speech. Oh look, my battery ran out. All y'all can't see me no more. Okay, well, let's just finish up this section real fast. So what words are most common, most unique to each year? Okay, so the most frequently used words, the words that occur a lot, seem to be curse words. Maybe no big surprise with pop music. But uh, other things like, yeah, yeah, baby, and that, that seems to be fairly common. So, um, and you'll see that there is quite a similarity as we go from month to month, year to year, right? We're into 2019 now. And it seems like, yeah, and expletive have switched places, but not a lot else has changed. Okay, let's look at a word cloud. A word cloud is just a way to represent the commonality of words. So we're just going to proportional to that's commonality. We're going to increase the font size on the word. And what I love about this is just the kind of yeah, 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 you know, to it. Um, love also seems to play a big part in this stuff. Um, so it's a visual representation that's a lot more, I don't know, draws you in in ways that this big dumb histogram does not. Okay? So the big dumb histogram is better maybe for getting a sharp analytic mind onto what the small fine differences are. But if you just want to glance at a topic and kind of get an idea of the tepidness of pop lyrics, I will say, then you can, uh, you can immediately see that most of pop lyrics, most common words are just things to make the music feel rather than anything about a message. And any message that they do have for you appears to be about, I love you, baby. All right, so that was common. As you remember from our discussion, TFIDF is not about commonality. In fact, common words disappear when we measure their TFIDF. So what are the most unusual words? What are the words in February of 2017 that are unique to February of 2017 and don't really occur much in the February of 2018? Okay, so witcha, get witcha, trapper, panda, etc. Those are unique, highly unique to February of 2019, 2017. Now, um, what is this showing us, right? Well, I think what you're seeing is m more than likely just common themes that are emerging as artists talk to each other. Okay, so just one artist is probably not going to make a word be the most important. It's probably going to have to kind of be in the air that several artists or songs all use this word right now, whereas normally they don't, right? And other years or months, they're just not, you know, not, not really into the uh, cool kids word usage, right? Um, I definitely have some favorites here. I'm I'm a big fan of um, Poom. I don't know what it is. You can see that I'm not into uh, the pop music of the 2019s, but, you know. Somebody's going to tell me that Poom is something I don't want to know about. Okay, so what can you conclude from a TFIDF plot? Well, it's probably not that no that you know we're we're not into this whole common word thing so we can pretty much eliminate c which is not necessarily the most common word in this data set now there's no information here about overlap between these years right what we're showing are unique words but it doesn't tell us that there's no overlap 
So what is true is B, is that these particular words are the most unique to the November 2019 data set. All right, so what about sentiment analysis? Is there any big difference in the overall positive or negative emotions in the different time periods? Well, this is kind of fascinating because both positive and negative emotion are going down with time. So pop's just becoming more anodyne, I guess. Less emotion, just more like, you know, whatevs. So, um, so the first one was in terms of word count, right? That's important to note. And some of that disappearing with time goes away a little bit when we get to frequency, right? So this is a frequency diagram. This last one where I said that a moment ago is a word count diagram. So this steep drop off with time kind of disappears when we look at frequency, whereas it's very prominent in word count. Hmm, this might be the shortening of the lyrics. Now it's still the case that there is some evidence for a drop off in emotionality, but it is much less in extent than it had been when we looked at word count. So let's focus in on frequency and you can see in a different kind of graph, you know, instead of doing it as bars, we can do it as lines and we can emphasize the change in positive emotion over time. And we can make that much more clear by just using, if we're going to try to convey this to a, uh, an audience, right? We are data scientists. We want to inform some audience. This may take it more into a sense of dynamic change over time to use a line graph instead of those bar graphs we had been using. Okay. So here's a little song called Roxanne that, uh, was previously used to break down some interesting things in past uh, quarters. I am not uh, really familiar with the song, but I did take a look at that video and that video is, Mwah! you should definitely go take a look at the video. So we can break down words that occur in the song Roxanne. And just FYI, the the guy, Arizona, he is totally into Roxanne and she just whips him around and she makes him, you know, crash and do all kinds of things that just time after time just breaks his heart. Okay. Well, so we have words like whip that has an anger and a negative emotion and wait has an anticipation, which also fills in on negative, right? and so on and so forth. We can see that for all the words in Roxanne, that the vast majority of the sentiment is more overwhelmingly negative because Roxanne, you know, he just keeps starting up again. He's like, oh yeah, Roxanne, Roxanne, Roxanne. And then she crashes him again. So it's got pretty fair shake of capturing the sentiment of Roxanne, the ups and the downs of their relationship. All right, so I think it's time to take another well-earned break. And when we come back, we will check out a little bit about grams and bigrams. See ya.